All right, you guys, we are back. It is Monday with Quantum Magic TV, and I am so, so, so pumped because today I have a good friend of mine, Christelle, in the house. What is up, my love? Hello. Now, girl, you have just been killing it. Fitness instructor, dancer, comedian, <laughs> and I just love watching you. You're always inspiring. You're always positive. So oh, thank tell you. Me, yes. Tell me about what you're doing, what's going on, how have things been for you? Oh my gosh, so many changes, obviously. Like when you and I met, it was like we were both dancers. I think we met like on a shoot, which is totally like yep. all the hustles, all the side <laughs> yeah. doing all the things, wearing all the hats of LA. Um, but it's been a complete shift. And um, when COVID hit, I was teaching um, at a gym and I re I've always wanted to do like improv and comedy. And as I was just doing that, uh, I was going to do an improv show and then everything was like stay at home order. And I was like, if this is how we're going to end the world, I need to do what I want to really do. So I was like, totally. whatever, if it's like stand up virtual, like I'm here to do it. I'm here for it. So yeah, it's just been like two and a half months, uh, maybe three now doing stand up and comedy and navigating these virtual shows. But such a shift from like what I did so many years in LA, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of crazy. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that because you grew up dancing, right? Yeah. So I grew up dancing just like you, like when you were little and did the whole dance life forever and then moved out to LA to be a dancer. And, and I, how do you feel LA made you feel as a dancer when you got to LA? I have like mixed feelings about it because, you know, at first I was like, oh, I want to be a backup dancer. And then you get in it and you're like, oh, everyone wants to be a dancer, <laughs> you know, and you're oh. like, everyone's <laughs> in this field. And then I guess I just realized like there's younger, there's always going to be younger people. And I feel like specifically with dance, it's just more like they're get they're getting breeded younger and there's just mm -hmm. fresher faces and and with social media obviously it's just like you always got to be on top of that and I was like whoa I think I'm getting like so old like you know I, we're not at all and not at all like, but not at all. <laughs> once you hit that mark of a certain age kind of people look at you like oh you're like the washed up one yeah. And like, it's, it, dance has been so great to me in LA. I'm like really grateful for the opportunities and, um, it's been awesome, but I always felt like, like for some dancers, it was like, this is their end all. This is what they want to do. They want to teach. And for me, it was always like, I want to be a part of it. I was in it. I was in the experience. And then I always knew like I need, wanted to do something else was in me and comedy has always been a part of my life. I always say this, I'm 29 years old. And I'm like 29 years old is like training of like comedy. Like everywhere I go, I just feel like it's been there, but I never like was like, oh, I should like do this for a living ever. You're like, you know? I'm actually really funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I feel like that's so funny when people say that. It's like, oh, I say I was stand-up comedian now. They're like, oh, tell a joke. And I'm like, well, you gotta pay it's for so that. It's so not like that. <laughs> it's so not so like not. that. I, there's like such moments and like just timing, I feel like as a comedian that you – you know that you have to kind of capitalize on that too, which is why I'm sure totally. you prep a lot, right? Yeah, it's actually, I didn't even realize um, how much writing it took in to do stand up. Like I just did improv and that's, I love doing that too. That's like my other love is like, it's on the spot. I feel like that's, I've improv my life. I feel like dancers are great at improv too. Like we know how to move our body. You know what I mean? Yeah, you just, you like when you talk, we like use our hands a lot. We're very physical. And that's kind of a lot of my comedy too is I, I, I like with a punchline, whatever I have to say, it always comes with like an act out because as a dancer, I feel like that's how we tell our stories. Totally. And I've, that's how I've incorporated it in my comedy. But every time I say that, especially, I don't know what it is, but with like men, they're like, especially men who've like seen like, you know, non alternative comedy, you know, they haven't seen the new comics or what's new. They're very like, Oh, I guess some people might think that's funny. And I'm like, Oh my goodness. I was like, come on, it's 2020. <laughs> Get I with know. It. And it's like, it's funny because it's like full circle really when you, you do kind of bring your dance into it. You are an actress in it. You are really like painting that picture in comedy. Yeah, you're kind of like, um, not kind of like, you are kind of like a one person show. You produce your stuff, you you write your content, and then you have to act it out every yeah. time, almost exactly the same if you can, depending on your crowd, because if it hits well, then you want to repeat that same thing when you do it again. And yeah. I'm so new and fresh. And so this whole new aspect of like doing it on Zoom, there's like this delay. So you're like, pause and you're like 
<laughs> is it happening to that hit? I don't know. <laughs> <You're just> like, <laughs> so. And it's pro- it's probably really like interesting for you too. Number one, you're new to the comedy scene ish. I mean, not because really you were doing comedy your whole life, but <laughs> right. getting into it now and then this whole shift with it being online must be really kind of hard to gauge at the same time as well. Totally. <laughs> and I feel like people who are like, are who have been doing like shows in person, I've never done an in-person comedy show, which is so interesting because I'm part of that circle of like, this is how we started was on here. And so, um, I do miss a crowd. Like I'm pretty sure you do too. As dancers, we need that audience feedback Mm -hmm. and same thing with stand up. You need that like energy to read the room. And so you're just kind of reading here, like, and it's so much more intense because your faces are right there versus in an audience, like, you know, like the lights, it picks up every little emotion, everything. So you, so I kind of, it's kind of more challenging to be like, I have to be on it with expressions and like pauses and all this stuff. But, um, I feel like we're going to be living with this for a little longer, more than we want to that. I'm like, I've just got to accept that this is the new reality and just like, you know, investing into like, this is how it's going to be. And like, uh, kind of enjoying that versus like trying to fight, like, I wish this and I wish this, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And what is your take on COVID and what is going on? I'm curious to ask you. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I, you know, I struggled with like expressing my views a lot because with stand up, it's so like a lot of it's political. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is your point of view. And with me, it's just like, I figured out where's my truth, like in in this political climate. right? Right. And I feel like for me, it's become so real because for example, my mom, she has um, a breast cancer and she's about to finish treatment. Um, thankfully, not like infusion chemo where she has to go to the doctor, but she's doing it from home. Okay. And so it became really real to me because she was, you know, compromised, you know, um, and all my aunts who are like all my moms who raised me, they're all like 62 plus. And so that already like hearing the, that in the news was like, my family's compromised. And, um, it's just like, it's so simple to me. It's very like, okay. Like the grocery cart situation, like no one puts their grocery carts away. No one's policing you at the shopping center, but like it's courtesy to do it. And I feel like that's the same thing with masks. Like no one's going to police you to do it, but you know, people complain about this like small little thing. And I'm like, it's just a, it's for me, it's just like, just do that one thing to save. And if you think about all the people and like, it's, it's just become like, don't be selfish. You know, like if it, wear a mask in the store, wherever you need to go, take it off and you go home. You know, it's right. so temporary. It's so quick. You go in and out. And for me, it's just like, I get it. There's like the whole conspiracy theory about it. And like, I, I see how that story's made. And then I see the other side of it's just like, right. If the experts are right, right. Then, okay, we're doing it right. But if the experts are wrong, the most that I did was like follow guidelines and I didn't hurt myself by being extra careful. I guess that's just yeah. where I stand with that, you know? Absolutely. And it's, it's hard and different for everyone because everyone has a different experience with it. So someone who has lost a family member from it versus right. someone who feels like they haven't even seen anything happen for them in their life. It's such right. a different shift. But at the end of the day, is there political things going on? Absolutely. For sure. Do we know and can we control that? Not at all. So yeah. If you are going out and about, absolutely, I do think you do need to totally wear the mask if you're in public places. Do I feel like hiking outside when you're by yourself? <laughs> right. Mm, I really and no don't. one's around. Personally, yeah, I, really don't. I don't. Um, because I'm like, you guys still, it's like you need to be, you're human. You need to be outside. Right. You need to be Fresh air. Air. So there's such different, you know, viewpoints on it all, but I'm always so curious to ask everyone, like, what is your take on it? Where do you stand with it? Um, and how has it really affected your mental health health and, and where you're at and what you're doing with your work? Um, that's a, such a good question. I feel like that's a hot topic for everyone because for people who were, who were doing like self-help work, um, spirituality and really in tune with themselves, I feel like they like, you know, really like thrive during this time because I feel like we've always wanted that pause in life. I know there's a, a portion of people that were like, I same, like I want this <laughs> pause. I needed this. How much longer can we have gone like this? Right. We needed yeah. to pause. And it was always like, especially if you're in a big cities like LA, New York, where it's like, 
hustle, hustle, hustle. Always. You're like, I can oh, no. never stop. So I actually loved that time. And I felt like, oh, this is like, this is such a precious time to like take it. And I'm grateful for this. And then there's the other part of friends that are like, I need to see people like I miss it. Um, but for, for me, it was like, oh, this is such a great break and an opportunity to tune into what do I really want to do during this time that I have time. It's not right. even about like, I need to make time now. It's like, no, we all have time now. Like there yeah. is no, I can't answer the phone. It's like, girl, I know you're at home. I know. Like, <laughs> answer the phone. I, I know you're not anywhere else, you know? By the 12th call, now I know you're ignoring me. Right. Now I know you just don't want to talk to me. Okay. Yeah. Like seriously. Yeah. It's so interesting too, because I feel like some people are looking at it like this time and this blessing, which I'm in that boat too. I'm just so grateful. And I've really tried to level up in all areas of my life for myself because I knew I can take this time to be upset and say it's miserable and really fall into that wormhole. And that is such a scary place to be if you allow it versus, you know, how can I grow? How can I become the best I can be so that I can use this time to be a better version of myself? And it was interesting because I, you know, I'm never going to say names, um, but (laughs) I I will put people on blast on my podcast. Um, I had someone reach out to me and message me saying, you know, well, I used to do this, this and that um, and coach for MBA and, you know, shorter girls, you need to suck in so you're taller and da da da. And, and, um, and, 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 but, uh, and saying, you know, your photos are great and giving me that feedback. And, and, you know, in that moment I was like, all right, um, I don't know how, what the intention was with that there and if it was really a positive intention off the bat. And I just came back at it with, you know, thank you for the feedback. I'm always open um, because I'm always trying to just be the best I can be and level up. And they never said anything back. So because of the (laughs) never saying anything back with that, I think the intention there was, um, and they did preface, oh, you're so happy in such a miserable time. And I just Mm. thought to myself, I choose to be happy in a miserable time. I how agree do you with feel you on that. Yeah. Yeah. I totally feel like, um, one that was 100% a projection of where right. that person was feeling. I'm right. such a believer of that. I feel like when you, it's so corny, but when you hear like hurt people, hurt people, it's like, if so, they're not, if they see someone thriving and being positive and like striving for what they want to do, then there's that other person that says always wanted, who doesn't want to do that first yeah. of all, who doesn't want to be happy doing what they want to do. Whoever's saying that is a freaking liar. Okay. (laughs) Like everyone does. We're all trying to like do our best and that's where we want to be. And when other people see people doing that, then I feel like their natural thing is to criticize, judge, because it's coming from a place of how do they do that? I can't do that. And it, and then I'm pretty sure you've gotten this too. Like, how are you so positive all the time? Positive Patty. Like I get that whole, (laughs) that whole vibe every time. And I'm like, I'm also a believer of like, I'm in full control of like how I feel. Am I like that all the time? Hell no. Like we're all that way, but it takes time and work. And it's like, it takes time to be by yourself to get there. Um, And just also like, I always, I just heard this quote from a really good like comedy friend of mine. And she says, who are you allowing to judge you? Right. And then that brought me to what Brene Brown always says. Like, if they're not in the ring with you doing what you're doing, like, they have their opinion is like squat. It doesn't matter. You're row. You're row. <laughs> yeah. row. So true. You know, yeah. I had a heckler in a show and a heckler who was a comedian, first of all, that's like, that's what? A no. That's a big that's a no. Big no. Mm-hmm. And so what I did was I just signed up for every single mic that he was at. <laughs> I love for the it. next one. <laughs> and I was like, I'm here. I'm going to show you that I'm around and I'm sticking around for a while. Good. I love that. Because, you know, it's so interesting that people go out of their way to comment or sabotage or have to be a naysayer. And and I I welcome it because I <laughs> bring it. You know what? I, it's really no problem for me because I know who I am. Right. I know what I do on the daily. And it is a daily practice. It really yeah. is. Yes, girl. It takes work to get to that place of like shield protector of energy. Don't, not going to let that affect you, you know? And really choosing to focus on finding the beauty in the negatives because when you're able to do that, nothing can really detour you off the path you and, and, and hurt you in the way that it might hurt you if you're focusing on all the negatives. Right. It's like you choose where to focus your energy on. 
You know, Absolutely. if you, I notice when I get into thoughts, I'm like, wow, why am I just, if I get into complaining mode, that's when I know I'm in a negative space. I'm like, Ooh, it's just complaints coming out of my mouth. Right. And it took work to get to that point of like being conscious of like, wow, what am I saying? And then when yeah. you do focus on the positive stuff, like things just start to snowball and then everything yeah. else seems to be awesome. Even though it wasn't awesome yesterday. You're like, yeah, right? yeah the good that's in that. Flow state. I know. And it's so interesting. I feel when I'm in that flow state, I'm sure you do too. You just, like you said, yeah. everything happens. It's just like good things and then you're excited and then it's more and more and more. But yes. when you are in that negative state, I know for me, like I had, I have to check myself and I really have to, it does take practice to even notice when you're in that state. And for right. me, I, if I, depending on the state I'm in, I'll literally cancel my entire day because it's not productive yep. for me. What do you do normally when you're in that state? You know, I've, girl, I've been there when I'm like, cancel all my plans yeah. to my fake assistant. I'm like, take it off. This <laughs> Rachel. Rach, cancel my, meetings. I'm not going. Yeah. Um, but totally, I know how you feel because you just, sometimes it's like, I always say like, sometimes it's just like this outer energy that you're just like, oh, like I need to surrender to this moment and recognize where am I pause. Yeah. And I think it's so hard to do that. Like pre COVID because it was like, we had to keep going. Right. Oh, yeah. But now I feel like when I've gone to that space, because really there's like nowhere to go. Right. Mm -hmm. I just like, think about like, girl, it's that inner saboteur voice in your head trying to tell you things that ain't true. Like she could visit like, Hey girl, nice to see you, but you can't stay. Yeah. Like, that's why I just tell that voice. Acknowledging like, it for sure. I, yeah, totally. Acknowledgement of like, girl, that's a negative thought. I, I hear you. I see what you're saying, but I'm not going to let you stick around. Yes. You know, I'd say the same thing about like pain and trauma, like that pain and trauma is so temporary, but in the moment it feels like, Oh, I'm going to like, I can't can bask in this. Every, yeah, let me just <laughs> ask in this. And like, then you become like a drama queen and you live in it. And sometimes you need to live that drama queen moment yeah. of like, let me just like binge watch whatever Netflix or like sit down. And then you're kind of like, okay, this is old. Like, yeah, 100%. I can't do this any longer. And I tell people like, acknowledge that. Yeah, feel that. But that's not you. Yeah, that girl, emotion is Hallelujah. Not yes, girl. It's <laughs> so true. Hallelujah. It's not you. <laughs> No, she, it's just your inner voice is visiting. She can come visit, have some ice cream, Yeah, but you can't stay girl. <laughs> and then, I, and then people, I think sometimes don't really realize they, they blame this mood and they get into this mood and then they start defining themselves with this mood. And then that's when that snowball of the negative comes. Yes. I feel like we've all been there where we define, that's such a good way of wording it. Like you define yourself with that mood and you think it's forever in yeah. that moment. It feels like oh, I'm not doing anything. I'm like, what am I, what's the point of all of this? And you just stay there, stay there. But again, it's just like that energy continues to stack up. Totally. And then if you don't do the practice to like stay aware of it, yeah. then it can get to that like dark place. But I would say like, you should be like really reaching out to people around you for that. You know, I'm pretty sure you've got a great support system of friends, colleagues, people who understand where you've been. And I feel like that's really important when you're in that space of like reaching out and like, and I feel like as women, we have a hard time asking for help. We're like, Oh yeah, I got this. Yeah. But then when you do ask for help, you're like, that was so much better. Like, I feel so much better. Like after you cry, you're like, I feel so good. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> And it's hard too, because I know I live alone and I'm in Los Angeles. I, my family's back in Canada. So right. and I do, I do have an amazing, you know, support group of friends and people, but sometimes it's easy to fall into your own dark cave and not want to reach out, you know? And I really yeah. want to like encourage people during this time to find daily practices or things that work for you to keep that positive mindset. And I'm curious to ask you, like, what are some daily things that you do that help you with all that? Um, so a year ago I went through, you know, the toughest news finding out my mom was diagnosed. And I feel like that was, you know, I'm an only child and raised by single mom. So she raised me, my dad's like now in my life, but like my whole child was all my mom. So that was my everything. So I feel like when I went through that, it really taught me how to like count my blessings as, as like typical as that sounds. It was like, um, what I do for my daily practice is I started to incorporate like three things that I'm grateful for when I first wake up in the morning, like while I'm laying in bed, I'm like, just say it in your head. Like, what are you, I'm alive, you know, simple, I'm breathing and, uh, I had a great sleep or yeah. I'll say like, I didn't have a great sleep, but I'm awake. 
you know, like not everyone can say, you know, you could be awake and living and like, you know, breathing, but you're not like living what your truth. And I, I just always remind myself what I have. Like I started adding like this whole ritual called like magical mornings that I read from if you read the secret, it's called like the magic of the secret. And it's like this exercise you do for 30 days. And it was even as simple as like, when you take like two steps off your bed, like one foot, you say, thank, and the other foot you say you. So you're like already like, thank you. You're like starting your day, your first steps of the day. And then that kind of brings in the energy of like gratitude already as crazy as that sounds. I'm like, yes. this isn't going to work. It's but I was like, little things though. It's little things. Yeah. It sounds crazy. And then I started, you know, sharing that with other friends. They're like, whatever. And they're like, girl. And then I noticed their energy shifts and it's like, isn't it crazy how a little thing can change? Yes. And I think also moving my body. I was going to say that fitness. For yes. you. How does fitness. that play a role? I feel like fitness has like, ch- like the definition has changed for me because before it was like, you know, as a career and it like yeah. still is, you know, it's like definitely a moneymaker and I'm still passionate about like helping people. But I feel like now it's more like a hundred percent mental health, mm-hmm. like 99% of the time of moving my body is for my mental health. Because once your blood is flowing and your body is going and you like sweat and you're like detox, I just think of like a detox, of everything. Too. Yes. The yeah. release of what you don't need. Release what doesn't serve you. Yeah. Like that's actually, that's exactly what it is. It's it really like, is. let it go girl. Yeah. When I have friends that are like, girl, I'm just like not up to, it. I'm like, girl, you need to release the toxins and move your body. Go for a jog. Like just go five minutes, just go for a walk. Just move. Yeah. When you move your body around, then the, the blood starts to flow in your body and you feel good. And I feel like primarily that's what I'm doing it for now. And I feel like your body responds better, your, your brain responds better, you get more mental clarity, because it just makes sense, like mind-body connection, like if it's all functioning, and you're breathing, and you learn how to like utilize it, you just feel better than if you were to stay stagnant, and like not move your body, and those are the days, it's easier to say no to work out, it's easier to stay stuck into your feelings, it's harder to ask for help, and it's harder to move your body, but the end result is like, or the end result of like the journey is just like, girl, you just feel so much better. <laughs> the end result is your energetics. And that's what people don't understand. Yeah. And I, people are like, well, how do you stay positive? How do you stay motivated? I stay positive and motivated because in my mind, I don't ever want to go. I've been down both roads of feeding into right. the, no, I can't now just go drink instead and see friends. Yeah. And, that. and then I've been on the side of, no, I'm going to go for my goals and I'm going to work out and eat healthy and do this because I know how it makes me feel feel and I know my energy changes and I even have people commenting and when you feel that and you see the results it just makes you want it even more right and I um I get this is interesting concept like when you said like I decide to like follow my dreams versus like going out for a drink I find that I don't know if you agree with me I find that like difficult sometimes because if I deny someone a social thing and I'm like, oh, but I really have to produce this. It's kind of like, girl, you don't have time or something like that. And I'm like, ooh, that's when I start deciding like, which, who do I want to keep around? The ones that yes. support what I'm doing because they'll always be there no matter what, you know what I mean? Totally. And also like finding the balance of like spending time with that, but also saying like, hey, this is what in the long run, like, let me do this and like, trust me and then totally. have my back and support. But yes, when you do make the decision to take the time for yourself versus like uh, social, then you're like, I think what you're at and like where I'm at now is like, you're starting to, to find the quality of your time. Oh, absolutely. right. Like time is like, Ooh, like well, we're reaching that 30 mark coming up. Ooh, so it's girl, like, it's like, <laughs> Ooh, there's a time clock. I know. <laughs> no. I know. And I'm like, I w- I went down that road of, of doing the bar thing for three years. I got here and I was Same. drinking and, and I was really not following what I needed to follow. And I, I was, I felt awful. I was in such a bad mm. mind state. I wasn't doing all the things I wanted to do. And I was surrounding myself with people that did not care about my well being at all. Mm. And so now I think, too, once you do decide to go down that path of like sacrifice and no, I'm going to do right. this because it fuels my dreams and what I want to do, you quickly find out who will fall off. Stick the around. And yeah, stick around or exactly. Not. And like, you know, you talk about like the three years you have the bar scene. I'm like, yeah, at least fun. Right. Like we all need that experience. I had that too. And I feel like that's just like, you kind of, you have to go through it. I feel like in order to get to this positive place of, and like, you know, more self-awareness and like a higher level of consciousness, you do have to go through a dark 
everyone, the darkness never really goes dark away, phase. right? Yeah, the yeah. Dark phase. And what yeah, you and like to play in. Yeah, like that's always been there, but it's a matter of like how you can, you know, it's to how you deal with it. And, um, you know, going through like the dark phase, you're able to like come into the light and like see the other side of it. And um, you kind of just have that temporary happiness when you go out and do what you don't really feel like doing, but you know, it temporarily makes you happy, but you know that if you stick to what you want to do and what feels right. Um, and when you make that decision, you know, you're going to have a fulfillment, fulfillment of like pure joy and happiness and more peace. And it's like, it, that stays versus yes. like, oh, it's just a quick little, and that's the feelings where you're like, oh, I don't, I didn't feel good. It's yes. like it did yesterday, but it doesn't yep. feel good today. And then you're chasing that again because you're just like, well, it's too much work to maybe do the work. So I'm just going to chase that one more time. Okay, let me chase it one more time. Yeah, and then like three addiction. years have gone like a by. Drug. Literally. Yeah. Totally. I mean, that's where my whole weight loss came in. I went to school, pursued something that I thought I wanted to do, but in my heart, I knew wasn't for me. Like I grew up, I was going to be a journalist. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it all kind of ties in ish, you know? (laughs) Right. But when I was like, I was like, I think I just want to play an anchor on TV because I'm not that nosy. Like, like other reporters, you have to be nosy and like find the story first. I'm like, just tell me what you want to tell me. Like, I'm not good with confrontation. (laughs) So I'm just like, whatever you want to tell me, that's fine. But like, that's not a reporter. And then (laughs) that's when I started, you know, drinking and I gained a lot of weight. I mean, you know about my, like, um, my weight loss journey, like I was almost like 200 pounds. And then I was like, that did not feel good. I pretended on the exterior that I was fine. Girl, she knew her angles, you know, like she was doing it. Yeah. And then I was like, uh, this doesn't feel good. And then at first it was like, I need to lose weight because um, I don't look good. I don't like the pictures I'm looking at. And then it slowly turned into a whole spiritual journey and a whole mental health thing that it's like, wow, that's not even what it was about. And it's like life where you think it's leading you one way, but really like it's teaching you a whole different lesson and a whole different route. And I feel like that all needed to happen, dance, fitness, and to get me to hear, to like do comedy. And it's like storytelling, yeah. you know, and it's, for me, it's like such a release, like, like laughter is medicine just yeah. as much as like fitness is. And I'm like, if I can incorporate both worlds and all the worlds, like, why not, you know? Yes. <laughs> and doing what you love that fuels your soul. I just said this to a friend yesterday, like you'll never work a day in your life if you do what you love. And it's just so true. You know? Yes, honestly, girl, I'm be, this is like so vulnerable and so honest, but like, I like personally for me, like I never felt that with like doing dance or fitness, but with comedy, like yesterday was an example. I sat there for like 12 hours and I just edited, edited and did my like, you know, mock standups and recorded it. And I was like, oh my God, like I didn't even see the time. You know, I've never felt like I'm doing so much work and like not getting paid for it doing comedy. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like not a money maker. Yeah. <laughs> right. I but guess. I feel so fulfilled and I'm like, I don't care because I know there's a payoff somewhere and there's no shortcuts. I'm going to like do what I got to do. I'm being like, yes, woman right now. I'm like, yes. And yes. yes. Do that. <laughs> I do too. And you have to be too, because I feel like the more open you are, that's when the doors open and you don't even know where it could lead. Exactly. You're just like, sure. And then if not, then it becomes a lesson or you're like, I'm not doing that again. And how would you know if you don't try it out? Right. And you don't, for me, it's like, if I'm curious about something, then obviously the answer is yes, because then I'll go on being like, what if I did say yes to that and I didn't do it too bad? Just, you know, just try it out. Just say yes to everybody. Like it's either, and you know, it's either a fuck yes or a fuck no. (laughs) Like, exactly. really, I'm telling, it's like there's really? no in between. And the minute you're on that in between, that's your ego in your brain being like, I'm not trying to listen. So why don't know? Right. Exactly. No. Exactly. I know, I know exactly that space that you're talking about. So you're yeah. exactly, it's a very hard, like, fuck yeah. And yeah. hell no. Like, if you know that gut feeling of like, I don't want to associate myself with that person, or I don't feel like that's a good opportunity. Like, no, from yeah. your past experiences, you know? And then if you say yes, and you're like, that's a lesson. I, you know? Yeah. And totally. I'm curious to ask you, you know, during this time, I feel like a lot of people are using it to level up and really take the time to be with themselves and learn about what they want to do. But I feel like there are a lot of people using it as an excuse to fall into their bad, unhealthy patterns and being miserable and following right. that. How many on, okay, say on, on, 
two hands, would you say okay. it would be half and half for your circle of people that's trying to be positive, trying to be ne- on the more negative side? Or what? where is your gauge at? With, with I would people? say most of my family and friends are on the positive side. Good. Okay. Yes. Awesome. That makes me so happy. To hear. Yeah. I just, I thought about that the other day, actually. It's funny you bring it up because I'm like, you know, I really am about like who, like my tribe and like people around me. I, not that we have to have the same exact views, but I do want the same kind of energy around, you know, Mm -hmm. don't want to be around like, you know, negative people that are going to, if it's energy out for me to, to hang out with you, then I know there's something up. But if it's like, it brings me joy to discuss like what you want to do in your life and positivity, I'm here for it. And, you know, even from my mom, like what she's going through, she's like, oh, I love this. She's like, I don't have to get anywhere. I don't have to go anywhere. Delivery is available. I'm like, girl, me too. I I don't have to step from the grocery (laughs) store. It's not even like there's an extra charge for delivery anymore. It's like, it's free. And you're like, girl, just order over $35. Yeah. You're like, girl, I'll stack that up. It's fine. Like, bring no it. No problem. You know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Like, even like, um, like just to protect my mom, because I, I was in LA and then I, I quarantined there and then I came to San Diego so I can help out my family. Oh. And so I'm not going to stores just to like be extra, you know, cautious because she's still on treatment. Yeah. So there's all these stores that are like, you literally order online, you pull up and then you just pop your trunk open. Like I, I literally have in like a sheet protector, like my ID and like confirmation through the window. So I don't even have any contact. Oh, like people so need to learn. Crazy. I need to do a tutorial. Oh my God. That's that. amazing. And then they pop the trunk and then they put it in there and you go away. And oh, like, it's perfect. way better if you don't want to wait for delivery, but yeah. like, it's way better if you want to also get out of the house, but you don't want to go into the stores. If you're like that person, Is that on like, like app, they have an app or something. Yeah. So target does that like via app. If you have Amazon prime, uh, whole foods does it like, cause they they're paired now. I know that like a bunch of like target, Walmart, Amazon, um, Petco did it. I did Petco the other day oh, wow. <laughs> to get stuff for my pets. Yeah. I was like, I'm pretty sure all of them are doing like a curbside pickup. The Filipino grocery store, Seafood City did it. I was surprised. I thought they were like ancient, but they're with it. They're with it. They're with it. They got the website. They got the parking spots where you go. And I'm like, oh, this is great. This is so awesome. I'm like, now I have more time to do all this than to have to. I'm like, I see why people like why wealthy people in LA pre-COVID did Instacart. If you know about that, like the grocery app. Yeah. I'm like, Uh Now you don't need to be bougie to do that. (laughs) Yeah, no, 100%. And now I think too, like when you do realize how valuable your time is and what you want to do with life, you try to find ways and hacks to to savor your time so that you can focus on all the things that you really truly want to do and not focus on the little things that, you know, are necessary, but maybe someone else could do them or you can find ways or help to get it done. Yeah, Shayla, you're like... um definitely one of those women that's like, I'm the CEO of my own company. And I didn't understand that until doing comedy. It's like, uh, women, we need to learn how to delegate. Like we need, how do we become the Beyonce and like, just point and be like, do this, do this, do this, do this. And I think we're all like working our way up to get to that point. And especially with COVID, I think it's really like lit a fire in a lot of artists ass to be like, yes. girl, if you can't just be one talent, you got to grow tech. You got to be like your own tech audio person now. Video can't like you have I'm about to, do to get a vlog camera. I'm like, okay, <laughs> girl, I just got this set up and I'm like, sound check, 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 check. One, yes. two, here we go. <laughs> I know you are so profesh. I'm like, okay, my my mic's not set up. We just <laughs> girl, like, oh gosh, my I mic got you, girl. <laughs> I, I know you. I'm going to call you after. Yes. Um, one last thing I wanted to bring up. You yeah. were on, on the show, the ultimate tag. Oh my God. On yeah. Fox. <laughs> How yes. was that? What I feel like, Oh my God, I would have gotten such anxiety having someone chasing me. Like, how was that for you? What was that experience like? First of all, I don't even know what this was when I signed up for it, okay? I was working at a gym and one of my clients, like boyfriends, was a casting director and he's like, hey, he's like casting for this like American Ninja Warrior type show. And I'm like, cool, why not? Like, yeah. it was one of those, yes, I'm curious. LA. <laughs> Always, like some random thing. So I was like, sure. And he's like, oh, it's going to be a Skype interview, right? And I was like, okay, cool. So he was just like, do the Skype interview. And then he was like, also, before you do the Skype interview, film yourself getting chased by someone. And I was like, (laughs) okay. So I had my best friend, Poofy, chase me in the gym and like do obstacles. He's like, jump, split, do whatever. I was like, cool, I'm just going to be funny. And I didn't take it seriously. Like, I was just like, let's just do it. Like a 15 second clip. And then two weeks later, he was like, 
hey, we need to interview you because you booked the show. And I was like, what, what show? I don't even remember. You know, you just do things and you just like, don't remember like if that's going to yeah. be a thing. Yeah. And so I, I go on set and he's like, Hey, here's a video of all the taggers that are going to chase you. And I'm watching these like stunt women and men. And I'm like, uh, I already signed all the papers, right? <laughs> like I'm, I have to do this now. There's no coming out of it, you know? Oh and, gosh. and I have no experience in parkour or run. I never even played a sport in my entire life. It was dance forever and ever and ever and show choir. That's all. That's like my background. So I'm like, and just, just the gym, right? So I show up and all these athletes from around the country, like CrossFitters, like marathon runners, like people who parkour athletes. And I was like, Oh shit. Like this thing, <laughs> I'm going to be so upset. Cause I'm going to look crazy. And then you only get to do the course. Like first thing in the morning, like call times, like 7am, you have 20 minutes to like walk the course. Oh. And I'm like, and then you're in the green room and then they're like, all right, episode, whatever you're up. And you're just waiting there all day, like kind of in quarantine, like oh. then you compete. So you, you're just like, on edge all the time. I think that was the most stressed I've ever been. I was really? like, is this what athletes go through? Cause dancers, when you have a show, you've rehearsed, you know what you're doing, yeah. you know, your, your place, you know, your, you know, your choreography, you know, your blocking. And here you're like, it's like, you don't know what's going to happen when you get out there. So but you honest, intuitively just had to just go with it. Yeah. And you know, what's crazy is that two weeks before I got asked to do um, ultimate tag, I did the whole Jim Carrey thing and manifestation of the secret where you write yourself a check. Cause I just gotten um, divorced and I got a lot of debt from that. And I wrote, I need 10 grand to pay off my debt. So I wrote myself a 10 grand check and I put it on my bulletin board. Two weeks later, I got asked to do ultimate tag with no intention of trying to. And I was like, she just needs to survive and not break an ankle or something. You know, right. I was like, my body is like, this is my moneymaker. And honestly, when I did it, it wasn't until like, the third round, I was like, oh my gosh, I have a good chance of doing this. And then when I ended up like doing and finding that I like beat her time, I was like, oh my God, the check. Like I thought about the 10 the grand check. check and I was like, holy oh, shit, this God. shit works. Yes. And he's, he, right. And he says like, write yourself a check. Like he wrote himself a million dollar check, but you can't just sit back and eat a sandwich. Right. So I, you know, and, and after that I was hustling, I was like trying to get out of divorce, trying to get me back, trying to like love myself again and get back into like, who am I without this relationship? And so all of that work, I feel like was like, here you go. Like, it was like, you earned it. And I was like, everyone's like, would you ever do it again? I'm like, if the stakes were higher now that I have experience. I'm right. Like, sure. Absolutely. And it's so funny. Like you said, I feel like the universe di really does reward you when you decide to make those energetic shifts. And when you do cut people out of your life, when you do not Amen. engage in certain things, then those little gifts start to pop up and you're more conscious yeah. of it. And like you said, like intentionally putting it out there and like writing, I do that stuff every day, all the time myself. Yes. Well, I love Jim Carrey and I, I drive along with <laughs> Envision all the time. <laughs> girl, hallelujah. We yes. should share vision boards. Yes. Like, oh my yes. God, girl. I have like a whole wall over there. <laughs> I love that. I, I, we're such visuals. I feel like as dancers, we're such visuals. Like we need to see things and then, then we can like move forward. And I'm to I totally love that because it really does work. Like I, and it may work in a way that's not your plan. Right. right. And so this was totally like a definition and example of that. I was like, my plan was not to go on a show, a parkour show. Right. on reality TV and like do that, but it happened. And uh, obviously I don't want to be a parkour athlete. That's like not the end game, but right. it did give me experience and meet amazing people. And actually one of the taggers who tagged me during my like end game, she's also doing stand up. And so now we're both like in that world, which is crazy. And I'm like, see, see what the, what the universe does for you when you it's just so believe true. and you just like, you just keep working hard towards what you want to do. That's oh, that's tattoo. beautiful. Oh, Your first one ever. That was my first one. My mom's writing and believe because I always knew when I was a little girl, like if you believe it, you'll, it, you'll see it. And it's not, you have to see it to believe it. It's the opposite. Yes. You know? Yes. My mom is totally is like, to see is to believe. And I'm like, damn, it's like a lot of proving. Right. Yeah. And I talk a lot about my mom and like my, my comedy, but I love that you said that, like, believe it. And then you'll see it because it does take a lot of faith to get to that point. Right. And a lot of work. So I, 
I love that saying. That's so beautiful. I've yet to get a one tattoo, but I feel oh, like I'm girl. in that space now. <laughs> I've now just got another one. My dad. Oh, this once one you yet. get one, you just go down, right? That's what everyone <laughs> yeah, says about uh, tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm all like, I love spiritual messages now. So I'm like, okay, I can't stop. <laughs> I, love I love it. I so love it. So oh, awesome. Well, Geez, girl, I'm so thankful for having you. Oh my Thank gosh. you so much. This has been so insightful. And I think a lot of people are going to resonate with this. So thank you for I being open so. and vulnerable and being here. It's been amazing. Oh, thank thank you. you so much for having me, Shayla. I love, love, love that you're doing this podcast. And I'm just so grateful to be here and uh, do this with you. Absolutely. And where can people find you? Where can they go follow you? What are your tags? Yeah. So my tag is just my name my, on Instagram at Christelle De La Rosa. And then I have a link there on my bio that has all the links to Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Um, I've got my comedy content on there. So everything is on uh, Instagram website coming soon. That's yes. know, in the process. <laughs> and when is your next virtual comedy show? I actually have two this Friday. I host a, um, an open mic every Friday, either six, seven or eight. So that's all on Instagram. And then I'm PST, doing, um, right? I'm sorry, PST, Pacific time, PST, yes, Pacific okay. standard time. And then I helped produce a show that we're calling pandemic gals comedy virtual show. And that's Friday at 7 PM Pacific standard time. And that's on my Instagram, but tickets are on Facebook and all that. So it's going to be a virtual stand up comedy show, all women, female comics and all the proceeds go to midnight mission, which is to end homelessness in LA. So support female comics and also support midnight mission. If you come to the show Friday at seven. Oh, I love it. You guys. Okay. Make sure you go and follow Christelle. She's amazing. She's funny as hell. I love your content <laughs> and you're just so awesome. Oh, girl. Thanks, girl. Yes. Keep being you. And thank you so much. You guys for joining us today on quantum magic TV. Remember come see us every Monday at 12 PM PST. We can't wait to see you guys next week. Thanks guys. 